So now you are the largest by footprint U.S. Uh, player. I mean, obviously we've seen this sector has not had a good year or year and a half in the market. Where do you see uh, yourself in terms of positioning for a rebound and really just the fundamentals in terms of some sort of an inflection point that uh, investors might actually get excited about again? Yeah, sure. I think the actual fundamentals of the business are as strong as they've ever been. Um, you know, Illinois' adult use is off to a hot start. Massachusetts is picking up its steam. I think you're going to see a number of big catalysts this year, including Maine being the second state to go adult use on the East Coast. You've got governors in New York, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, all talking about adult use, and you likely will see ballot initiatives in New Jersey and Arizona. So there are a number of catalysts on the horizon, and the actual fundamentals of the business are great, and you're going to see a lot of organic growth from Caroleaf and a lot of other U.S. operators this year. So I think the stock price will ultimately reflect the real value of these businesses as they see con continued growth. So with regards to organic growth, I mean, obviously, I mean, Curaleaf has been uh, acquisitive, uh, obviously, the select deal and the grassroots deal. Where do you stand right now with grassroots and uh, where do you see the advantages there once that deal finally gets uh, done? Yeah, I mean, that's a transformative deal for our company. It puts us in the key Midwestern markets, including Illinois. They've got a strong footprint in Pennsylvania. So it's obviously a very good deal for our shareholders. And we're looking forward to closing that deal in the spring. We announced about a week ago that we cleared the DOJ HSR hurdle. And so now it's just up to the states to transfer the licenses. And we'll continue to look around the market to find opportunities that are accretive and uh, a, a good uh, places to deploy our, ca our capital. We did a $300 million debt raise earlier this year. And so we've got a really strong balance sheet and we're always looking to deploy that capital to make returns for our investors. Well, what kind of areas? So, uh, you know, this was a vaping deal, but what kind of opportunities do you see specifically, whether it's uh, what kind, you know, in terms of products or the type of companies that would make a good strategic fit for further capital deployment? Yeah, well, by the end of Q2, we'll operate in 20 markets, and so I wouldn't be surprised if we do bolt-ons in existing markets. For example, in Arizona, we have nine dispensaries. There are a number of other deals that we could look at to do bolt-ons in that market or similar types of things. Um, you know, we, there may not be any big deals on the horizon, but we're always looking for small opportunities that are accretive. When you look at the market, uh, Joe, specifically, uh, and just to kind of look at the demand here, I mean, there was a lot of talk about all these states uh, legalizing or decriminalizing to some degree. Uh, but one thing that we've seen in Canada is that the demand side didn't exactly materialize the way some folks thought it would, particularly I'm talking for recreational stuff. I'm just wondering, what do you see in terms of the demand side here uh, south of the border here in the U.S.? Yeah, the U.S. could not be more different than Canada. It's structurally an entirely different market. Our companies are vertical. We have the whole supply chain. The demand is incredibly strong. I mean, up and down the East Coast, our biggest problem is that we can't grow cannabis fast enough. The demand exceeds the su supply. Um, you know, Illinois supply constrained Massachusetts. So consumers are showing a huge preference for regulated, taxed, legal cannabis. And that's not going to, you know, uh, that's going to continue for a long time. So we're very optimistic about the demand side of the equation. We've got to deploy capital to build capacity and capture that demand curve. And I, I think it's going to be a huge year for, for U.S. cannabis and cure relief. What states are most likely next to uh, expand on the recreational side? Where do you see the fastest progress right now? Well, as I said, New York is having a very public debate. Um, Governor Cuomo is trying to get it done through the budget. New Jersey is going to have a ballot initiative this fall. Um, I think Connecticut will likely follow suit if New York or, or New Jersey um, do a bill. So, um, you know, there's a lot of public dialogue going on and a lot of recognition that cannabis has its rightful place in our society and should be taxed and regulated. So we're very optimistic about the dominoes falling here over the near term. Uh, Joe, you mentioned uh, that uh, financing that you uh, got, I think uh, that was back, closed back in December, uh, that syndicated term loan, uh, 275 uh, million or so. Uh, this was kind of a big deal at the time because, I mean, we've seen a lot of banks sort of shy away uh, from cannabis uh, companies, cannabis-related companies. Uh, your company was kind of seen as kind of the first breakthrough to really secure sort of a, a big uh, sort of a, a slate of financing here. Do you think that we'll see a little bit more of that? And do you think we'll see it to the extent that the banks are willing to offer a little bit better terms uh, than maybe the percent that you got? Well, you know, yeah. from our perspective, we did upsize the deal to $300 million. And I think we have, you know, the best money raising apparatus in the business and the best credit profile. So that's how we're able, able to attract that investment. Um, I do think that debt markets will continue to open up. Um, you know, I want to highlight there was no warrant coverage in that debt deal. So it was straight debt. And I think that um, we've demonstrated an ability to deploy capital and get returns for our shareholders. And that's how we were able to pull that off. Let's talk about your demand, and you mentioned that continuing to accelerate. Where specifically? The, the, the American cannabis 
consumer? What are they gravitating to? What are they looking for as they learn about the recreational market, as they learn about the product? What are the, uh, the trends that you're seeing just in terms of what they're into? Well, I mean, let's just start with medical. If you look at Florida, you know, Florida is adding 10,000 patients a month. There's, you know, 300,000 patients in Florida. It's one of the fastest, gro fastest growing cannabis markets in the country. Um, medical markets are growing up and down the East Coast, New Jersey, New York. Um, and then the adult use market opens up a whole new class of consumers. We're seeing people come into our stores from all walks of lives. You know, cannabis experience, cannabis curious, people that can't sleep, people that have anxiety. I mean, cannabis is so um, has so many applications that the, the, the number of uh, patients and uses are, are really endless. Joe, do you anticipate that we would get any sort of federal uh, regulation, something that would sort of consolidate, I guess, all of this sort of state by state uh, uh, legalization uh, anytime soon? I think the first thing we'll get is the Safe Banking Act, um, followed by a states act, which, which makes it a state's right to have cannabis laws. I don't really see a full federal law legalizing cannabis anytime soon, but I think that we'll get progress at the federal level over the next 12 to 24 months. And that'll allow things like credit cards, big money center banks, and potentially cheaper debt to enter the space. And so all those things bode well for future you know, cannabis growth.